What's going on, Route 66 travelers? Hey, today we are stepping off of the highway so that we can take a little bit of a recap look into a book that's not really about what you think it is, the book of Philemon. Philemon, a book that's not actually about him. It's actually the story of his slave Onesimus and this letter that Paul has written back to him regarding that slave. See, at one point, Philemon had actually learned from Paul, met him, sat under him, turned from his Roman gods, and accepted Christ into his heart. And then what happened was Onesimus, under the sentence of death, actually, had stolen from his master and run away. And while he was in Rome, he ran into Paul. And because of this, he became a Christian. And so Paul is now sending him back to Philemon with this letter, this little postcard of a book that illustrates so beautifully the idea of salvation. See, Onesimus is every man or all man. We are represented in him as the runaway that is running from God and now lies under the sentence of death. And Paul represents Jesus who appeals to God for man and accept them and to charge their sins to himself. And then Philemon is God who receives those repentant sinners back who have come to him through Christ. And the first thing that Paul says and that Jesus does for us is, accept him as you would me. This is what Philemon 1.17 says. So if you consider me your partner, Paul says, receive him as you would receive me. See, Paul was speaking this on behalf of Onesimus to Philemon. And Jesus does this same thing on behalf, uh, on our, our behalf to the Father. In John 1, 12, it says that, But to all that did receive him, anyone who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And so we have to see that just as Paul did for Onesimus, Jesus does for us. He says, accept him as you would accept me, because in Christ you are fully accepted by God. And the second thing Paul tells Philemon is, just charge anything to me, any debts, anything he owes, I'll take care of it. He does this in verses 18 and 19, saying that if he's wronged you at all, whatever he owes you, just charge that to my account and I'll take care of it. I even write this in my own hand so you know that it's from me and that I am telling you the truth. Paul offers complete payment for the debt, and that's what Jesus does if we choose him. See, his sacrifice and blood and his death on that cross, he tells the Father, hey, I'll pay the price for them. In 1 Peter chapter 2, it says, He himself bore our sins in his body on that tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness, that by his wounds we have been healed. He says, charge it to me, because in Christ, your debt has been fully paid. And then Paul tells him, you know what, do this for me. See, I, I, don't, I don't mean that you need to do it for me as in like you owe me something, but I want you to do it for me because, as he says in verse 20, I do want some benefit, but in the Lord. So refresh my heart in Christ by showing me that you can do what's been done for you. That's Paul's appeal to him. Forgive. Forgive him, Philemon, because Christ forgave you so much. And Jesus appeals to the Father on our behalf in that way. He says, Father, forgive them. And then he looks at us and says, you guys do the same as he forgives you you need to forgive others also. We see a reminder of this in Ephesians 4.32. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ forgave you. Our debts, guys, they were nailed to the cross. Gone, paid, finished, done, bought, so that we could serve something greater. We all want that freedom, just like Onesimus wanted it. But see, when he ran away, he was looking for it in the wrong place. And a lot of times we look at freedom in a false way. It's not what we think it is. Truly freedom is this. Freedom is a purpose in life, but the purpose in life in finding your freedom is not to find that freedom, but to find your master. And when you find that true master, then you truly find your freedom. I can only imagine Onesimus handing this letter over, trembling to Philemon. And Philemon reading this and seeing, Paul says he's going to repay everything? Well, Paul wouldn't lie to me, so I guess that's that. And he accepts Onesimus back willingly, and Onesimus goes, no, I'm not worthy of this. And Philemon says, no, justice has been done. A true and valued integrity has 
covered this and taken care of it for you. So come back, not as my slave, but as my brother in Christ. You're taken care of, you're forgiven, and you are made new. And that's what Jesus does for us. He goes before the Father on our behalf. This death that we are meant to die, this debt that we cannot pay. He says, I know they've screwed up. I know they've disobeyed. I know they can't take care of this, but Lord, I can. And so I will spread out my hands and I will take the penalty for them. Then you can forgive them if they choose you. And you can welcome them into your open arms as your child. Guys, this is an unbelievable blessing. What a beautiful picture it is that Paul presents for us in this letter that he writes to Philemon on behalf of Onesimus. Hey, keep studying in your groups, in, as an individual, in your families, memorizing those scriptures. They're important to life. And we'll see you as we step back on the highway this coming Sunday for a riddle of a book, but man, one of the most powerful pieces of truth we have in scripture. We'll see you this next week as we step into the book of Hebrews. And until then, happy studying.